We're going to continue with uh, a form that's actually, in a theoretical way, quite a boring form, the rhythm changes form. And uh, this form is the basis of a large number of jazz tunes. And it has many chords. It has very quick changes, but within the tonality. And what I would like to show you is that if you're in a form that has that many uh, chord changes, that actually the solution for you is to not try and play all the changes, like I'm always telling you to do, but in this case, to just think of the tonic and to make some phrases. And when it gets interesting is usually the bridge. So the bridge is the solution where you get the new material in your song. But the uh, rhythm changes A sections are places where you can just freewheel for yourself. You can just listen, you can just phrase. And I encourage you to listen to the greats who play on these kind of uh, rhythm changes, um, to listen how they actually disregard the changes. In Gypsy Jazz, when we talk about rhythm changes, uh, the, the original model for the rhythm changes was the song I Got Rhythm by George and Isra Gershwin. And the B section of that is what we understand as a rhythm section. Uh, rhythm changes, apologies, B section. But in the Gypsy Jazz, most rhythm changes songs we actually refer to, we mean the A sections are like rhythm changes. Examples are Daphne, Belleville, Swing 42, and of course we can also include I Got Rhythm in the Gypsy Jazz repertoire. Let's take a Gypsy Jazz rhythm change standard. This is called Daphne. And actually, in Daphne, we're in a very strange situation that the bridge is also rhythm changes, but just in a different key. So actually, Django and, and, and Stefan have copied the A section onto the bridge and gone up one half step. If you look at the changes for Daphne, you bring them up on the internet, you'll see what I mean. So we'll just going to, we're just going to play uh, the Daphne A sections, and I'm going to show you in the key of D, which is the key of Daphne, how I disregard all those changes. Although before we start, maybe I should show you how you would not disregard and actually play all the changes and how that would sound. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> So it's all very jolly and it's nice, but there's not really a story in there. So let's try and bring a story into these. We'll play two A sections of that. One, two, one, two, three. So you see the phrases again have not followed the form of the song and certainly not the form of the chords which are one, two, a three, a four, so many chords. That's really impossible. But the one thing we can take from our uh, other lessons is I've shown you how the tonic and the dominant, there are three tonic chords and three dominant chords. So you can already, I've shown you how to disregard those chords. So in this case, if we're going from a D to a B minor, B minor and D, they're the same thing. They're the one and the six. So this is something that you, you have to do to make things melodic. You have to actually sometimes disregard the chords when you can, when it's in one scale. Let me give you another example where I play a few more bluesy and diminished licks on the major. Still thinking about the phrasing. One, two, uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Let's do one more uh, uh, rhythm change form. We'll go to I Got Rhythm. We, I play that in B flat and uh, I'll do the same thing here. You'll notice the chord changes are roughly the same. And I will again disregard the chord changes and try to make a nicely phrased story. One, two, uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Uh, 
etc. So I've used a little bit more bluesy material, I've used a little bit of dynamics, and again, the phrases are not symmetrical. 